Disney Cruisers and welcome back to the DCL community or we are here to help you plan, prepare for and get excited about your Disney cruise. You guys know me. I'm Rebecca. I am your host and admin here in the D Disney Cruise Line Facebook group in the DCL community. And tonight we are excited to be talking about everybody's favorite port, Castaway Key. I'm so excited. So as you guys are coming in, please say hello. Let us know where you're watching from so that we can say hi. And let us know if you have a cruise book to cast away. And if you have any questions, we can answer them. Um, or if you're just counting down and, and here for the excitement. Hunter, do you want to go ahead? I'm going to get your um, deck pulled up. Um, and as we're going through, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Yeah. Hey guys. Thanks for tuning in tonight. My name is Hunter and I'm a concierge travel advisor with Jayco Travel. Um, my favorite vacations to go on and plan are Disney cruises. I've been on 24 Disney cruises. Um, I've been on all five Disney's ships and um, we just absolutely love Disney cruises. Everything from the crew members, the ice cream, the private island, Kasawiki, which we're talking about tonight. And the character interactions. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Listen, any parent that is in here right now, he's coming right back. If you are a parent, you can go on your phone. Um, so we are going to go ahead and start um, going through. If you guys have any specific questions, I know we got a bunch of questions sent in about like the um, the Castaway 5K um, and just like what to do on the island, what to do if it rains. So we're going to plan to go through I'm those so questions. <laughs> Listen, any parent on the call gets it. We all went through the last, gosh, three years of everything going on. So you are not alone. If you're a parent on here, you know. <laughs> so um, if you want to reach out to me to start planning your Disney cruise, you can email me at the email listed above. Um, my website's also there and then all my social media is there as well. And we will link this at the end as well. And I think Rebecca's going to drop that in the comments too. Um, but there's multiple ways to reach out to me and I am always available to you. Yes. And just so you guys know, her planning services are totally, totally free for you. So feel free to reach out. Hunter is so great at talking through like what's important to you and your family. And she can make recommendations based on you versus you just kind of guessing about what's best for you and your family. Um, so you want to go into some of your specialties? Yes. So I specialize in family travel. I have two kids, as you saw. Um <laughs> <laughs> and then beyond family travel, I have um, extensive knowledge in allergy travel. We have a gluten allergy and nut allergy in our family. And then accessible travel as well. Um, my husband is an amputee. And then we um, have sailed and love sailing in concierge with Disney Cruise Line um, and have on all the ships. So again, a lot of firsthand knowledge there. Um, beyond my fam like my personal experience with my family's cruising, I've also worked with numerous brides to plan their Disney Cruise Line fairy tale wedding. Um, and my husband and I are actually hoping to plan our 10 year vow renewal on a Disney treasure. Yes, we're so excited for that. Oh my gosh, so, it's the best. And we did already get a question about accessibility. Um, it, do you know if somebody in a wheelchair who can transfer to bench height? and can do stairs with a rail can do the stingray experience. Do you know that one? So the stingray experience is kind of fully in water on your own. Like you're actually standing in the water. So I don't think that would be super accessibility friendly um, mm -hmm. because you're, you're standing in the water. And while I don't have any pictures, um, if you were to Google the Disney Castaway key, um, singer adventure i'm sure there would be a bunch up and you would see um because you're at they hold this like platform and then the stingers kind of like swim up on it mm -hmm. you're kind of like holding it and propping yourself up in the water yes but hunter does have an entire section about accessibility and getting around the island with accessible options so i would say hang tight and see if she answers some more questions with that um, but let's let's jump in. Where do we start with Castaway? Because it's it's the best. It is. So the first thing, if you want to take a cruise to Castaway, contact me. Um, not all itineraries go to Castaway, and we'll talk about that later on. But 
just because you're going on Disney Cruise doesn't mean you're going to Castaway. So the next step would just be like brainstorm the time if you you want to go and then the length of cruise you're looking to take and we'll collaborate together to choose um, the options that would be best for you. I'll send over a proposal and then we will lock in your stateroom and start the planning. Yes. Oh my gosh. In this picture, just like, I want to go there. I don't want to go to work tomorrow. I want to go there. <laughs> yes. So on our little Zoom tonight, we will be talking, um, like introducing you to Castaway, the way Disney preserves the island, the different beaches, um, food and drink, activities um, and excursions available, the kids club. And the playgrounds, the 5K, the character interactions, accessibility again, and then the transportation. Yes. And as we're going through, if you guys have questions, put those in the comments and we will do our best to get to all of them. Take it away. So Disney's Cast Wiki is a private island exclusive for Disney Cruise Line guests um, on Bahamian and Caribbean cruises. Like I mentioned before, not all itineraries go to Castaway. Um, Disney Cruise Line signed a 99-year lease for the island with the Bahamian government. A lot of people think they own the island, and they do not. Yeah. Um, they spent 18 months developing the island for guests, um, and they hit all the marks from the details with the decor, um, excursions, the cabanas, the playgrounds, the overwater playgrounds, just everything. Yes. Oh, it's the best. And I actually didn't know that they didn't know on the island until this last cruise. We did Disney Cruise Line Trivia and we missed that one. I'm like, how did I, how did I not know that? Yes. One of the questions is how long is the lease? Yes. Oh, now I know. <laughs> All right. So before Disney leaves the island, the island does have a little bit of a history and I'm a history buff. So I love these details. The island was rumored to have been a safe haven for pirates in the early 1700s. There's no solidified proof of that. Um, but it, with the elevation changes on the island, um, it would be a good spot. So who knows? Maybe there was a real life Jack Sparrow there before. But the first known settlers arrived in 1783. They formed a village where they, you know, grew their own food, and then they made a living salvaging shipwrecks and then building um, small wooden boats. Wow. And then that kind of, yeah, I don't, who knows what happened, but, and then in the 1960s, Alvin Tucker was flying over the island with his real estate agent, and he saw the potential for the island as a real estate investment. He purchased the island built a runway on castaway so that'd be more accessible since it was only accessible by boat. And then unfortunately, once he purchased the island before he was able to get anything set up, um, drug smugglers took over the island. Wow. I did not know that. Yes. And it became too much to handle. Nobody could get it under control. And there's rumors that um, like police were involved in then criminal activity. So Alvin Tucker decided to sell the island and he sold it to Leisure Club Limited, which later was revealed to be backed by Frank Barber, a known drug smuggler. Ooh. And then in 1982, the island was raided by police and $100 million worth of cocaine was found and Frank Barber's reign was ended and the Bahamian government took back over the island. What? I'm learning. I just, it kind of has a little bit of a dark history, but I love history facts like that. I had no idea. Oh my gosh. Okay, keep going. So in 1983, the movie Splash was filmed there. Um, Tom Hanks, Daryl Hannah. So this wasn't the first time Disney like had their eye on it. And then Disney saw the potential and leased it from the Bahamian government in 1996. And the magic made the first stop on the island in August 2nd, 1998. And another like kind of pivotal mark for the island island was the flying Dutchman from Pirates of the Caribbean anchored at Castaway until November of 2010 when um, it was probably too deteriorated because it was, you know, designed as a movie prop and not to be a boat. Yes. Oh, it was so cool. I love the pictures of like the um, 
both ships in it. It's just, it's the coolest thing, but I wish I would bring something like that back. But Yeah, it was really cool. And then like we, they would do some character meet and greets with like Jack Sparrow near Marda's Bardas and you would see uh, the Flying so Dutchman cool. in the back. So cool. Pretty cool. Yes. So then the next slide, preserving the island. So as we all know, Disney really tries to um, make a difference in the world, whether that be um, donations or research, such as um, the things that are done at Animal Kingdom. But in order to preserve the island, only 55 acres of the 1,000-acre island are developed. Oh, wow. So a very small portion of the island is developed. Wow. And Disney does its part to preserve the pristine water by providing researchers and restoring the health of cor coral reefs, by transplanting long spine sea urchins and fostering their growth. Wow. And then the Disney Cruise Line crew members that some live on the island year round, they help to protect an monitor endangered loggerhead sea turtle nests on castaway during that season oh wow i did not know that and then they they do have solar panels in the backstage areas of cast castaway where the crew members that stay year round um live and they're used to fuel water heaters for the bathing dishwashing and laundry so and then cool. Disney Cruise Line also recycles 7,000 pounds of used cooking oil each week to power a fleet of Bahamas waste management ve vehicles in NASA. Wow. I did not know how. I knew they did some things to get back, but this is incredible. And I know we're talking about some of the good things that they're preserving, but somebody asked about bug spray for some of those pests that we maybe don't want on our vacation. Do you need bug spray if you're visiting Castaway? I personally don't ever use bug spray, but a lot of people will bring the sea lice sunscreen. Mm -hmm. um, it's like reef safe. Um, they they do have some sand fleas, other some people call like sea lice mm -hmm. um, in the sand and they can cause rashes and um, be very irritable for people. And so that um, sea safe sunscreen, yeah, people say does help. Yeah, I think there's one. It's called like Reef Reef Safe. I think is the one that a lot of people recommend. I mean, I've been to Castaway more than twenty times at this point, and I have never run into this. Apparently, if you stay away from some of the ropes that are the dividers, that kind of helps um, because that's what they cling to. Um, but just a good thing to have, just in case. Totally agree with you. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's talk about transportation. Yeah, so once you get off the ship, it's really seamless and easy. You'll walk off the ship. There will be crew members handing out towels. You will want to grab a towel because that is the only place to grab them if you don't have a cabana. Yeah. They'll also be selling coolers of water. You can grab one of those if you'd like or keep walking. Um, you'll come to a few photo opportunities. And if you don't, you can either stop for the photos or when you're finished, if you want to skip the photos, you just keep on walking and you'll see the tram stop. So that first um, tram, tram stop, now they do run pretty continuously. So if you're walking and you're like, oh, run, there's one coming. And then it leaves. Don't worry. The next mm -hmm. one's probably only five minutes behind it, if that. Yeah. If you don't want to wait or you'd rather just walk to the left of the tram stop, you'll see that the path continues towards the beach. And I would say... The first stop is probably only like an eight minute walk. But if you want to go all the way to Pelican's Plunge, I'd say it's probably closer to 12 to 15 minute walk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And some people think that first section of beach is it. And then it gets so crowded because that's people's first stop. But if you keep mm -hmm. going, there are chairs and umbrellas. I know we're going to be talking about that. But keep walking if you want to get a little um, less crowded area. Yes, for sure. And then if you want to go to Serenity Bay, you have to take the, there's two separate trams. There's one that goes to both family beaches and there's one that goes to Serenity Bay. So on the first tram, if you go on to the family beach, there's the first stop will stop at Scuttles Cove and Scuttles Cove is the kids club. And then that first area of family beach. 
If you stay on the tram, you'll hear them say, we're going to Pelican's Plunge next. That's the second area of the family beach. Mm -hmm. And that's where you'll find like the water slide. And then if you want to go to Serenity Bay, you'll get off that tram on Pelican's Plunge. And then a Serenity Bay tram will come to bring you to Serenity Bay, which yeah. isn't really walkable. Yeah, it is. A, I mean, it, it is, is, but it's it's really far. Yeah, you got that runway Hunter was talking about. You got to walk all the way down the runway. Um, it, it's a little bit of a hike. You you can do it. Um, question for you on the trams. Are they accessible? I have something about that at the end. Okay. And the accessibility Perfect. part. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Love it. And are the trams free or do you have to pay for them? No, the trams are free. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Let's talk about beaches. All right. So the, like we were talking about, there's two sections of family beach. The first one at the Scuttle Cove stop and then the second one at the Pelican Plunge stop. All of these beaches have plenty of chairs and umbrellas. You'll find the chase loungers. You'll find the little um, chairs that you can kind of like take down closer to the water. Um, and then there's always going to be racks of life jackets, very various sizes from the little ones to adult size. Um, always lifeguards on duty. You'll have lifeguards on the beach and then also lifeguards um, on stands like out in the water. And they rotate a lot so that nobody gets too tired. Um, we all know safety is Disney's highest priority. Isn't that the truth? Yes. Oh, and man. then the island, you'll see, like, when you get there on the ship, um, and you can kind of see it in the back behind this Pelican's Plunge picture um, back there. But the whole island by the beach area is barricaded. Um, with reefs and then is also netted to help keep larger sea life out. Yes. Yes. Very, very safe. Um, gosh, I remember when they put this in, the slides are just so much fun. And question for you on the family beaches, are those free or do you have to pay to get to them? They are free. All of the beaches, chairs, umbrellas are included. Awesome. Love it. Oh, the best part. So Serenity Bay, we've talked about, is the adult-only beach on Castaway. Um, this white sandy beach is heaven. It's so like is. we mentioned, you can only access Serenity Beach by, from that second tram at Pelican Plunge um, stop. But if you're traveling with kids, take them to Scuttles Cove for an hour or two and go down to Serenity Beach. You will not regret it. Oh, it's the best. It's the, the best. water is Stunning. The sand is so soft. It's quiet and peaceful. I love yeah. it. And they've got bartenders walking up and down. Yes. Oh, it, yeah, definitely worth it. Ooh, cabanas. So beach cabanas are available on the island. There's 27 total cabanas on the island. 21 of those are at the family beach. And the other six are at Serenity Bay. So the cabanas are booked when your activity window opens. I'm going to be honest. If you're not sailing concierge, it's almost impossible to snag one of these cabanas. Um, mm -hmm. When you get on board, you can always get on the wait list. But again, uh, the cabanas are almost always scooped up by concierge cruisers. The family beach cabanas can hold 10 people. The standard size cabanas can hold 10 people and they start at about $800 for six guests. If you have guests seven to 10, it's a $50 plus tax per person upcharge. Good. There is one grand cabana on the family beach, which is heaven. It starts at um, $1,127 for up to 10 guests, but it can hold 16. So 11 through 16 would just have that upcharge. Got it. And then yeah. the six cabanas on Serenity Bay are much cheaper. Three, they start at three ninety four for the first four people, but they can also accommodate ten. Got it. Okay. And is the next slide all about what cabanas include? Yes. Oh, I love it. So the cabanas, they obviously have the comfortable seating. You'll have the loungers. You'll have just regular chairs and little like a little sofa. You will have a hammock. 
And then there's a freshwater shower. A little ER is not on there. But freshwater mm-hmm. shower so that you can rinse off after you come off the beach. Get the sand off. You get that salt water off of you. That's always nice. Rinse off any toys, anything like that. Again, I already mentioned the hammock. There's a mini fridge in the cabana stocked with water and soda. And it is unlimited. If you need more, you just let your cabana intendant know. There's fresh fruit and then packaged snacks like chips and granola bars. And then copper tone sunscreen products. Like I love this. They have regular copper tone sunscreen. And then they also have the, the baby one, the Ooh. pink bottle for kids. Um, snorkel equipment is included. Um, you can only snorkel on the family beach, but the rental is included. So you just go show your, your cabana wristband and they'll um, give you the snorkel equipment without having to pay for the rental. And then sand toys are included and they're already at your cabana on for all the cabanas on the family beach. Got it. At each cabana, you will find inner tubes and rafts, floats so that you can enjoy and you don't have to pay for the rental. Um, there's also baskets of towels, dry towels. And then also they have, they keep rolled up washcloths Ooh. Wet and cold in the mini fridge. So those are super nice and refreshing. Very nice. And then one hour of bike rental is also included. So if you wanted to ride, get a bike and ride around the island, that's included with the cabana. And there's also a safety deposit box in there. Wow. Okay. Is we there... really love it. I was going to get okay. like out so of the good. shade. Or like say was... have some shade, get out of the sun. It's great for little kids. Great for husbands who want to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hammock's so, fantastic for laying and reading. It's so, you know, people who love cabanas love them. And it's like the hottest thing since, uh, since sliced bread. We've never done a cabana, so I don't get the hype of it. And I know that that's like treasonous to say to any Disney cruiser. Um, But I mean, there is so much included and I know that it is an additional cost, but I'm assuming you also have somebody taking care of you all day and you probably don't have to take the tram either. Right. Yeah. So you do have a cabana attendant all day. There's a button inside the cabana. You just hit that button when you need them, whether that's to bring you drinks or if you have a question etc. If you want a ride on the golf cart from Serenity Bay to the family beach so that you can snorkel, fine. Um, And then I don't want to say they always offer golf cart rides from like the ship to the cabana or back, but sometimes if they're not too busy and you're not like going to the cabana at a prime time or going back to the ship at a prime time, you can get them to get you a ride on the golf cart all the way to the ship. Very cool. But it's not guaranteed. Okay. Good to know. Anything else? Like, okay. So if I'm not concierge, I'm probably not going to get a cabana. But if I don't get a cabana, I'll still have a great time on the island. Oh, you'll still have a great time. And like I said, there's always a chance you could go to guest services and get on the cabana wait list because people do cancel them. That's how we had our first cabana experience is we got on the wait list at guest services. I was going to say on my last cruise about like two, three weeks out, somebody canceled their cabana last minute because they were adding another family member to their itinerary. So it opened up. So never say never. I mean, it sounds amazing. And look at that picture. It, it just, it, it looks that like that picture is in the grand family cabana. So that's cabana number 21 on the family beach. And it also has like a dining room table, um, wow. lots of seating. So we, we eat in there a lot. And is this something that as a travel agent, you can help your clients book ahead of time? And like, if you are concierge, can you help coordinate that? Yes, or? absolutely. And we can even request certain cabanas too. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. Cabanas aren't sounding all half bad. I think this topic is probably my favorite one of the island, food and drink. <laughs> uh, the food is barbecue style food on Castaway and it is so good. So there's three open air dining locations. You'll find two at the family beach and one down at Serenity Bay. The ones on the family beach are cookies barbecue and then cookies two barbecue. Um, they are open 11 AM to 2 PM. Um, and you just go through like the buffet line, you'll find burgers and hot dogs. And sometimes I have like different sandwiches, whether it's a chicken or a pork, um, they especially change up the menu on double dips, but 
on top of the like main courses of those um, sandwiches or burgers, you'll find different kinds of salads. Pota their potato salad is my favorite. And yeah. you'll also find brownies and cookies, the soft serve ice cream station is there, just like the ice cream on the ship. They have a soft serve unlimited ice cream station at um, Castaway. They will have a section for fresh fruit. So they'll pineapple, cantaloupe, so honeydew, you name it. And then down at the adult dining, which um, is down at Serenity Bay, they also serve steaks. Yeah. And they are delicious. So good. So, so good. Um, I will say if they have the banana bread, you have to get the banana bread. It's my favorite banana bread ever. Oh, my gosh. It is so good. So good. Um, and before. Or I guess let's keep diving into food. And then I want to um, make sure we get to this question on castaway weddings, because that is, you know, that like the back of your hand. Yes. So allergy friendly food on the island. So you can order your allergy friendly meal to castaway. The best way to do this is the night before you stop a castaway in the main dining room, tell your server, hey, we're going off at the island tomorrow. We want to pre-order our food for castaway. They'll bring you the allergy menu. You'll place your order. When you're ready for your order, you go to Cookies Barbecue. It has to be Cookies One, is you'll hear them refer to it as because um, it's Cookies One, Cookies Two. So you'll go to Cookies One. When you're facing Cookies One on the left hand side, there's an allergy pickup window. All of the allergy meals go to that window. They'll be individually wrapped, all nice. They'll have a ticket on it with your name, awesome. and they'll get that um, allergy meal for you. Now, if you have a cabana, um, you're more than welcome to eat in there. We always eat in our cabana. And if your cabana host isn't too busy, um, we've had it where they would go to the allergy window and pick up the allergy meal um, for our party. And the rest of us would just go grab ours and bring it back. Good to know. And is a tip for your attendant included in the cost of the cabana or do you tip your attendant on top of that? It is not. Gratuity is additional. Got it. Okay. Good to know. And how are these allergy friendly meals? Are they just as good as everything else that you'd be eating? Yeah. So it's, it's really not that much different than on the ship. And if you want something from on the ship that is allergy friendly, or I see a comment about vegetarian, you can get it all from on the ship. And they also have um, usually like a salmon on the island as well. Yeah, definitely. Lots of options. You will not go hungry. Oh, so good. Oh, excursions. Everybody loves to find out like what you can actually do on the island. So let's talk about it. There's so much to do on the island. Um, like we've already talked about, there's bike rentals so that you can explore the island. Um, I have only done this once. It was really neat because we have to go to the backside of the island to the lookout tower, it's which so has cool. incredible views. And you either can do that by... You're more than welcome to just walk, but the Castaway 5K go, goes by that, or the bike rentals are a great way to go to the lookout tower. Yeah. Um, and then there's float and tube rentals. There's snorkel equipment available for rental, and then there's also like a snorkel excursion, but you could just go get your own snorkel equipment and go out into the snorkeling area. Aqua trike rentals, banana boat rides, so they pull you behind like a jet ski on the banana boat. That's super fun glass bottom boat tour there's different fishing adventures there's different versions of the stingray adventures there's one where you can just do the stingray there's some where you can like um, package it with the snorkeling hobby cat rental paddle boat rental parasailing the sea kayak rental and stand-up paddleboard rentals Oh, there's so much to do on this island, um, including, I already forgot, um, getting married, which I know is a different type of excursion, but where can you get married on Castaway? So there's two areas where they normally do weddings. The first is Wedding Point, which is, it's kind of split in between the two beaches. It splits up the two family beaches. So close to Pelican's Plunge, there's a bar and a... Um, kind of pier out there and they do a lot of weddings out there and then the other one is just like up on the beach in that same area right next to the wedding point area like before you walk out um 
I should have put a, I was going to put a map in this slideshow and I totally forgot. So remind me and I'll pull up a map and I'll point it out um, when we're done. Castaway weddings are beautiful. And if you are thinking about getting married at Castaway or on one of the ships, reach out to Hunter. She did an entire event just like this, all about Disney Cruise Line weddings. And she knows it so, so well and can help you plan that perfect event for your family and get all your friends on board too. Um, Travis, I see your comment. He's actually one of my Disney Cruise Line grooms. Awesome. If you remind me, I will take a video of the wedding area when I'm there. Um, love it in October. Love it. Oh, well, congratulations, Travis. That's awesome. Um, talk to me a little bit about weather on Castaway. I know that excursions are great, but what if it rains? Am I still going to get to do my excursion? So the you'll see right when you get off the ship at Marge's Varges, which is where a lot of the um, excursions that aren't just rentals meet at. They will have a sign out there that says if all the excursions are canceled, if just some of the morning ones are canceled, what have you. So strong winds will cancel some of some of them. Like mm -hmm. they're not going to take you out fly fishing with when the winds are strong. Um, same with like the banana boat, stuff like that. Because again, safety is their top priority. So wind and rain can cancel excursions and they will have that posted at Marge's Barges, which is right after you get off the ship. You can't miss it. And you will not be charged if your excursion doesn't happen. No. Awesome. And what if I, I'm not sure what my kids are going to want to do that day when we get to the island, if we're just going to want to relax or if we're going to want to do some of these things. So if I don't pre-book my float or my tube or my raft, am I still going to be able to do some of those once we get to the island? Yes. I'm going to be honest. I don't ever pre-book my float or tube. Um, the one time I did the stand-up paddleboard, didn't rent it, snorkel equipment, same thing. Um, the one things that I would be more worried about pre-booking would be the banana boat ride, the parasailing, mm -hmm. the glass bottom like boat excursion, and then like the fishing excursions. Yes. Everything. But you can always, if you like wake up that morning and like, I want to try something, you can walk out to Marta's Barges when you get off the ship and see what they have available. Yeah. Or go there at any point during the day to check if you're like, hey, I think I want to do something now. Yeah, you will see it right when you get off the ship. You can't miss it. Um, oh, Scuttles Cove. I have such fond memories there from when I was a kid. So Scuttles Cove is Disney Cruise Line's version of their kids club, but on the island. They ha This is a play area for those kids, 3 to 12, the same ones that would go to the Oceaneers Club or Oceaneers Lab on the ship. Um, and that are completely potty trained. Scuttles Cove has like a splash area, a dig area, there's some activities area. The counselors will be um, having organized activities all throughout the day. One thing I, I'm terrible about remembering this is your children must wear their band, the same band that they wear in the club on the ship they have to wear on the island. If you forgot it, don't freak out. They'll sign you a new one. Just make sure you, have, you return them. Yeah. Um, one thing I do want to say is before you send your kids into Scuttles Cove, lather them up with sunscreen. There is not a ton of shade in there. Yeah, that is so true. Um, rather be safe than sorry. And maybe send them with some Crocs or whatever other sand shoes they wear because the sand will be hot because like I said, there's not a ton of shade. Oh, that's such a good tip. An experienced mom right there. Um, if my family wants to stay on the ship, is are, are the kids clubs open on board or does the entire staff move? I think they all move to the island, right? The kids club will be closed. Got it. Um, they will have some like um, open house hours actually during Castaway, but it's not open for you to just take the kids in there. Got it. Okay. Cool. Um, and the same thing with Edge and Lab. They will, or Edge and um, Vibe, they will actually set up a meeting point with their group. Um, so for instance, when we were on in June, Edge was meeting at the post office and then we didn't see my 11 year old like the whole day on Castaway because he was with Edge and they started at oh, Hilkins yeah. Plunge doing the slides and then they went and played basketball and went to the game pavilion. I don't know what all they did, but yeah. they ran them all around with their little Edge kids and they had a blast. That's awesome. I bet he slept like a baby that night. That's great. Yes, every night. They had oh. them so busy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. People always ask if like teens and tweens have fun on board. I think they have the most fun of anybody on the ship. Yeah. Oh, I love it. 
Okay, playgrounds. Talking about that first activity that um, Edge did. Let's talk about the playgrounds. Yeah, so the water playgrounds, that's what I call them. So Pelican's mm -hmm. Plunge is the most popular one. Like I said, that's going to be that second stop for the family beach. It's got two water slides, one of those water buckets that dumps on you, some sprayers. Um, it's just a great water playground. You do have to swim out to it. Um, and you once you... It does go over your head is what I'm trying to say is you do have to swim at some point once you get out about three quarters of the way to the platform. Yes. And same thing coming back in after you go down the slide. Yeah. So if you are not a confident swimmer, um, I don't know. I, I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know that I recommend it, but definitely have that life jacket on. Um, yeah. When you're swimming out there. My um, daughter has gone down the slide since she was able to for the height. Um, and with the life jacket on, she does just fine. Perfect. Love that. Um, and speaking of kids, if your child has a Disney band, can that be used on um, Scuttles Cove? So the band that they give them in the Oceaneers Club before definitely can. I don't know about the technology for this Disney band, uh, the Disney band plus, but I'm guessing it is because it's the same RFID chip that they use in the regular bands, but yeah. we just haven't been too cast away with one of those Disney plus bands with the little one. Yet. Yeah. Those are still very new. Only two of the ships have them so far. Um, but let's, where's the splash pad? Well, let's go back to the other water playground. Oh, that's right. So I forget that there's two. Before you get to the Pelican Plunge spot, there is kind of just like an overwater jungle gym. It's got some rope, climbing ropes. It's got mm -hmm. monkey bars. You'll see kids like jumping off of it, swinging off of it. So much fun. We need to spend a lot of time there in February with both of our kids. Oh, I love that. And then the splash pad. So the splash pad is, it's kind of in between like cookies one and cookies two in between the family beaches. Um, back behind the beach across the walkway, it's actually kind of tucked away. Oh, I feel like you could miss it if you don't walk right past it. Um, yeah. But it is called Spring Elite and it's just a toddler friendly splash pad with, you know, water coming up from the ground and different oh, little awesome. activities inside. But it is great oh. for the toddlers. So cute. I love that. And then we have sports beach. So if you want to play some beach volleyball or some tether ball, there is an area for you to enjoy that. And if you're not too fond of just lounging around on the beach all day, um, there is ways to be active outside of all the excursions and you don't have to pay to do the volleyball or anything. So, and then the game pavilion. So you'll find that most of the times the game pavilion are taken over by edge and vibe, but they yeah. are in a shaded pavilion. Um, and they have table tennis and foosball and pool and basketball all inside of that shaded structure. And again, this is kind of like centrally located in between that family beach, not too far from where spring Lake is. Awesome. And do you have to pay for any of that or is that? No, nope, it's all included. The only thing you're paying for on Castaway is any alcoholic beverages, um, any excursions or rentals, and then a cabana if you choose to have one of those. Awesome. So you really don't have to worry about anything extra if you don't want to. That's fantastic. You don't. I feel like a lot of people are so worried about the extra cost because some of the other cruise lines, private islands, do have a lot of yeah. things that you have to pay for once you get to the island. Yes. And do you have to be able to swim out to the other water playground, the one with all the ropes? That one, actually, um, I was able to walk like all the way out and it was still pretty low on me. Um, my five-year-old kind of, kind of swam out, but my 11 year old had no problem. I'm not exactly sure how deep it is. And it also depends on um, the tide. If it's high tide or low tide. I not but yeah. it's not as deep as Pelican Plunge. Yes. Agreed. It's much um, closer to the beach. Yes. So just keep that in mind too, when you're jumping in, because I remember at one point jumping in and thinking that I had a little bit more water room. You hit the bottom real quick. It's definitely more shallow. Yes. Oh, it's so much fun though. And it's another included thing to do on the island. Oh, and 
have you done this before? Do you, are you, I have pre COVID. I haven't done it since it was self paced. I needed the organized activity to find the motivation to run on vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so what is the 5k? So the 5k is just a, what it sounds like a 5k round castaway and they have it very well marked. Um, it starts by where you would rent the bikes and then it leads you around the island. And again, since COVID, since cruising started again, it is self-paced. It used to be an organized event first thing in the morning, but now you can do it at your leisure anytime on your castaway day. And then they do have an exclusive Disney castaway key 5k medal, and then also merchandise for purchase, which is in that same um, vicinity where it starts, you'll see the bike rental and then the second shop, it's right there. And I know we always get the question, can I walk it if I'm not a runner? Absolutely. You, again, it is self-paced. So you are more than welcome to walk it. Yes, I am not a runner. And that is one of the reasons that I do not do the 5K. Um, you can find me on the beach all day long <laughs> at Castaway. Um, but people also wonder about strollers and running strollers. And can you bring kids? Can my team do it with me? Is this something that the whole family can participate in? Yeah, everybody can participate now that it's like self-paced. And yeah. there are some jogging type strollers on the island, first come, first serve. You'll find those across from Scuttles Cove at the first tram stop with the beach wheelchairs, which we'll talk about in a couple slides too. Awesome. And I just had another question. Somebody had sent a question about the 5K. So I'll remember it in a second. I'm sure as soon as as soon as soon we go past the slide. Oh, characters. That's such a cute picture. I love that. So the characters on the island are plentiful. This is one of my favorite spots to snag this a character picture. But if you're walking from the ship, um, depending on the time and day, and the character meet and greet times on the island will also be in the Navigator app. So heart those and it'll send you a push notification. But there's normally a character, like right when you get off the ship, we saw um, uh, Captain Hook and Smee right by the ship once. When you keep walking, you'll first get to the post office. There's normally somebody there. Um, I've seen Captain Jack a little bit further down the, the road. Um, and then along the tram path, whether you're walking or on the tram, there's two spots where you'll see characters. The first one is going to be on your left-hand side. It's a little beach scene set up. And then the second one is on your right-hand side, just past that. And it's the volleyball net area. Yes. Oh, there's so many good photo ops on Castaway. Yes. And then this is right across from Scuttles Cove. Um, Mickey and Minnie are here normally first thing in the morning, and you might see some other characters. And then along the tram path going to Pelican's Plunge, there's little hidden character spots that you might see people at. And though they aren't always there, but I've seen them there a handful of times. Yes. Everybody, I mean... There are characters that pop up all day and now like Mount Rush or yes, Mount Rushmore. Thank you. Yes. Um, that that's always a good one too. There's just, they bring the characters to you. God yes. bless. Them for they do a that. great job and they're in their little beach wear. So it's not going to be the same photo op that you're going to get on the ship. Yes. Oh, so true. And I remember the question, if I'm doing the 5k, is there a locker somewhere for me to put my stuff in? If I wanted to run an athleisure and then change into my bathing suit or do I have to carry everything? That is a great question, Rebecca. I don't, I have never put my stuff anywhere other than in our cabana. Yeah. And I know most people who I don't know that there are lockers. I could totally be wrong. I don't think there are. I'm I'm checking real quick. Nope, there are yeah. not lockers available on the island. I was gonna say I don't. I have never seen them, but yeah, I've so never looked for them. So, yeah. so most people end up going back to the ship. Like, yes. typically you want to run earlier in the day when it's a little um, less 
less hot outside. So going, kind of doing the 5K, getting your workout in, then going back to the ship and meeting up with your family. Um, if you're like my family, my sister is the runner. I, I, like I said, am not. So I can hold her stuff for her. But otherwise, I think going back is a good option. Yeah, you'll see a lot of people, if you don't get off first thing in the morning, typically you can disembark between 8 and 8.30, um, mm -hmm. just depending on your itinerary. But you, if you're getting off at like 9 or 9.30, you're going to see people going back to the ship from in their running shoes and shorts yes. that just finished. I'm always like, bless your heart. Good for you guys. <laughs> um, and talking a little bit about weather, do we have anything on weather later on? Because I know you've been to Castaway in different months throughout the year. Yes. And I actually didn't put anything about weather on there here, but that's a good thing to chat about is weather i mean just like anywhere we can't predict it it is in the bahamas um so a lot of people are familiar with florida weather the bahamas are not far from florida so what it's going to be in south florida in the month you're going is about what you can expect in the bahamas as well so we were there in uh january 30th this year that, that was the cruise that wasn't the date we were at castaway but january 30th wish cruise this year our castaway day was fabulous. 80s, like we got burnt, like beautiful weather. Then I was there on the February 13th sailing and the February 17th sailing. Um, or no, it was the 10th. I don't know. We did a back-to-back -back again and then February and both of our castaway days on both cruises were bad. Um, we were able to dock, which was shocking because it was super windy, like so windy the sand was hitting the back of our calves. Oh, yeah. And like stung. The weather was, or the water was not warm. Um, but like two weeks before, before that, we had a beautiful day. Um, yeah. In January 2020, our castaway day was canceled. It was so windy and the currents were too strong. The captain could not get the ship docked and they won't take chances. The Dream actually had a little incident at castaway one year. And now I feel like they're even more yeah. careful yes. about it. Um, but you know, the weather could be bad anytime, you know, with hurricane season, it's technically June and November though we see most of them in August and September. It's still possible. We were just there in June, had fantastic weather. We've had fantastic weather in August and September, October, November, December. Like I think yeah. the only month they haven't been to Castaway is May. Okay. Um, but the weather is just... Hit or miss, but I would say definitely your chances of a colder castaway day and even getting canceled would be high in January, February, because it's it is often windy. Yeah. I was gonna say we went we were at Castaway, I think it was like March second or third this year, and it was absolutely perfect. We've been in December when it's a little bit chillier. You just you know, you can never predict the weather. So go into it with an open mind. It's still a beautiful yeah. place, even if the water, even if it's not beach weather, um, it's still gorgeous. We um, take the opportunity if it's not beach weather to get that bike rental on, ride around the rest of the yeah. island and see it. It's super, it's super neat to see the other sides of the island as well. Yeah. Oh, there's so much to do. And I remember one time a torrential downpour when we were on the island and just getting back to the ship was crazy. But I mean, that can happen anywhere on any vacation. So just be prepared with a, a plan B or C. Yes. I mean, my kids, we're from Northern Indiana and my kids did not care that it was cold in February. No. I sat on the beach with a towel over me like a blanket and a sweatshirt, but they were in the water. They, yes. they didn't care. I was going to say, kids just want to swim, especially Northern kids. We're like, we don't get this ever. Let's yeah. go. Oh, and accessibility. Yes. So accessibility on the island, it is possible. It's not always easy, but they do want to do their best to make sure they can accommodate everybody. Um, so at the cargo handling tram stop, which is that tram stop, right? When you get off the ship, um, one of the, the trams does have an accessible front row in the shuttle. However, it's going to depend on the size of your scooter. Um, or your ability to transfer from the scooter um, 
And then, like we mentioned before, there are beach accessible wheelchairs. Those are across from Skittles Cove. They are first come, first serve basis, but they are there. And that's what that photo is. And again, that is also where the strollers are. Got it. And then there is one accessible cabana. It is cabana number one. You'll never see it online. Um, this cabana has to be booked by calling Disney Cruise Line when your activity booking window opens. Got it. And it's got a ramp into the cabana and then a ramp down to the beach. I will say it's not like it's not larger inside. So with like a wheelchair, you would have to move the furniture around inside. It's just it's not any bigger. It's just the ramp to make because um, the other five steps. Got it. OK. And that's, again, something that you can help with as a travel yes. agent calling right when that window books. Now, do I have to be in an accessible stateroom in order to get this cabana? You do not. OK. Good to know. And so if I so if somebody doesn't have accessibility needs, could they still get this? You could. Yes. If there okay. are nobody else has asked for it. Got it. Okay. Good to know. And somebody's asking, are there beach wheelchairs at Serenity Bay? I was actually just looking that up because I have not seen them. Yeah. I was I've only see seen them at the Scuttle Cove tram stop. Yeah. Um, that is where the I And Disney them. website does say they're there, but I don't think I've ever seen them there. No. And uh, they will do like, but they will get it there for you if needed. Yes. Yes. They're very willing to help. But I um, think they, they most, I think they stock them all at that first tram spot. Yes. Um, and is this, well, let's talk about what cruises actually go to Castaway since we know about how great it is and everything that's included. How do I get there? So cruises that leave from Port Canaveral, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, or San Juan are going to stop at Castaway. If you are leaving a different port, you're not going to Castaway. Yeah. Um, so again, the Castaway cruises are Caribbean and Bahamian cruises. So if you're leaving from New York or New Orleans or Texas, you're not stopping at Castaway or um, California or any of the European Alaska, you're not going to Castaway, obviously. No, um, but if you were, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so if I am sitting on this and I'm like, oh my gosh, Castaway sounds like the best. It sounds like heaven on earth. Should that automatically make me want to do one of these itineraries or is it even, or is it worth trying any itinerary that doesn't go to Castaway? Yeah, we've actually done two cruises that didn't go to Castaway and I don't think I really missed it Daddy, in the really? moment while we were on the ship. Okay. But I know beforehand, I was really hesitant to book those without going to Castaway. Um, we did two cruises from Galveston, Texas. And I, it, all on the cruise, I don't think I missed it. But beforehand, I was feeling like I missed it. Um, I do think Castaway and going from Florida is worth it. But that's my opinion. And it, you also have to weigh the cost for your family of how much it's going to cost if you're, you know, if you're in Texas. Like, do we want to pay for flights to get to Florida when we could cruise out of Galveston just to go mm -hmm. to an island? Yes. Agreed. So it's weighing the pros and cons with your family and with your travel agent. That's why we always recommend working with um, a travel agent so that we can give you those personalized custom recommendations for your family because no cruise is one size fits all. Well, that's so true. And I know I am definitely in that boat, no pun intended, but I am like so hesitant to book other itineraries that don't go to Castro because I love it so much. But then I see yeah. all these amazing ports and I'm like, ah, it, I know it'll be worth it once I'm there because it's about being on a Disney ship. But man, Castro. I know Castro has a special place in my heart and I really, really wish I could just go there for a week. Right. If only I could somehow name my firstborn Castaway. <laughs> I, um, I think I get so away. <laughs> there are some itineraries that we call a double dip and that means they go to castaway twice and we love these itineraries they're few and far between don't get me wrong but they are there um and going to castaway twice like you can't you can't go wrong with that there's no what's better and then starting in 2024 when disney's um lighthouse point opens which is a lot of us have been calling it their 
other private island, but it's just a Disney's portion of an island. Mm -hmm. um, there will be sailings going to both of those places starting in 2024. So I'm really excited for that. Like, I don't know. We can't call that a double dip because it's not going in the same place. Like, what are we going to call that? Right. I know. I know. I'm sure there's already a name for it floating out there. I know. Yeah. We're on one of those sailings next summer and I can't wait. Do you know, are there still openings on sailings for those next summer? Could somebody Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. If you are enticed by either going to Castaway on Double Dip or this new um, adventure going to both of Disney's private islands, send me a message. Like, we will make it happen. Um, one thing I'm really excited about is that there's more, the 2024 season, there was more Double Dips and then with the going to both islands than we've ever seen any other year. Yes. Um, and I think it's just so many people were like, we want more double dip itineraries because yeah. they, they used to be like a handful a year. Yes. And we've been seeing a lot more and people love it. I mean, yeah. the, what's not to love about going to one of our favorite places, you know, more right. than once in one cruise. I mean, it's Disney from start to end, which makes it so special. Not that these other ports aren't amazing, but you're paying for that Disney experience. And when it, you see it on the island, oh, there's just nothing like it. And it's just beautiful. I mean, Bahamian waters are beautiful anyways, but the way Disney has maintained and kept the island, it's just stunning. It is. Oh, man. Oh, okay. So that kind of wraps up our... Um, castaway discussion like as you can see there's so much for everyone um yes. you can lay around on the beach all day just watching your kids go down the slide or you can be active or you know if the beach isn't your thing you can stay on the ship and just see the beautiful island from the ship it's whatever you want to make of your vacation um you can do that with disney cruise line yeah. and that's what i love about disney cruising you know oh. I can go with my kids. I can go with girlfriends. I can go with just my husband. And it doesn't matter. We always have a great time because you always have the opportunity to make your vacation what you want it. Oh, and still good. getting that excellent customer service. Yes. Oh, it is so true. Go ahead. I was going to, two things I just realized I didn't put in there that I should have was there is shopping on the island. There's oh. two Disney like shops um, with like Disney merchandise. And then there's also, um, a few little stores that are um, like authentic like, um, Bahamian treasures. So you might see like sarongs or bags, hats, et cetera. Um, yes. From the island. Yeah. And, and there's oh, I was just going to say there are things at those stores that you cannot get on the ship. And yes. last time I was like, I'm going to wait to go and check out the stores. And, you know, I saw something and I was like, I'll get on the way back. Buy it when you see it because it's not going to be there when you come back. And then you're going to be like me and disappointed because you didn't get that castaway ornament that you wanted. Like so. the only things that you'll find on the ship that are on the island are a few of the magnets. Mm -hmm. um, but the cast members in the store can tell you like they'll say like, hey, this is on the ship. Buy it on the ship so you're not paying for the taxes. Yeah, it's so true. Um, but they know what's in the store. And like, if you forget goggles, like I swear every time we go on vacation, my kids don't have their goggles. We have to buy <laughs> goggles at the store. Or sand toys, um, sunscreen, like a phone waterproof case. All of those things are in the store as well. And then another thing I want to mention is there's hair braiding on the island. I know some yeah. little girls that love that. Um. And then there was one other thing I forgot to mention too. Yeah, the hair braiding. Realizing. No, but the hair braiding is super popular. It's in a shaded area, so you can go and hang out yes. with while they're getting that done. And um, it's pretty affordable from what I remember, um, especially compared to some of the hair services on board the ship. Yeah. And I mean, kids just love having that souvenir that they can wear to school on Monday and say, guess where I was? Oh, but... I feel like I keep remembering things. So there is a post office on an island. Yes. It is a legitimate post office. Like they, you, if you send a postcard from it, um, you it will be postmarked from Castaway. Um, so yeah. that's really cool. But I will tell you that it could take forever to yes. get back home. Like I don't know why it takes so long. It took us almost six months once to get a postcard. 
Yeah. Which is so silly. Like, it's just the Bahamas. Yeah. I got postcards from Portugal in a month. Like, I don't know what the holdup is, but it's really fun. But just so you know, like, if we, we mailed my parents and my husband's parents a postcard thinking, like, they would get it before we got home. They didn't. No. no. <laughs> that was, like, the first time we did that. Right. Um, and do you know, do they still do the um, free postcards in your stateroom drawer in the desk? Yeah, in that portfolio. Yes. I haven't looked in a while, but the last time I did, there were two postcards in there. And one was a picture of the ship. And I can't remember what the other one was, but they did have them in there. And they do have, I have this one from my parents. They went a couple weeks, a couple of weeks, a couple months ago. Um, So I got this one. They do have some really cute postcards for sale um, in the stores as well. Yeah, but there's only one or two in the leather portfolio that's in um, like the middle, usually the middle drawer at like the vanity area. Yeah. Yes. It's just a fun souvenir. Oh my gosh. Yes. Castaway is the best. It's definitely worth visiting. And if you have any questions, if you are just so excited about your Disney cruise and you are ready to book, reach out to Hunter. She is here to help you plan and figure out if a itinerary going to castaway is what's best for your family, or maybe there's something else that you should look into. She's got tons of experience from all inclusive resorts to other cruise lines. And of course, Disney cruise line. So she can kind of help plan that vacation um, and all of those details for your family. Yes. Uh, I love working with you guys. Like it gives me goosebumps when I hear about your vacations, when you come back and you're like, we did this and that, and it was so much fun. And you're sending your family pictures from vacation. Like it just warms my heart. Yes. Oh, she, she loves Disney cruise line as much as I do. So, I mean, maybe even more because you're all (laughs) in. So um, if you guys have any questions, that's the link to um, her page on the DCL community site up on screen. I'll make sure to put that in the comments as well. Um, But Hunter, thank you so, so much for your time tonight. Um, And we will see all y'all on board. Bye all. Bye, guys.